so glad to be back with you uh, for our fourth edition. Amen. I am Pastor Joseph Walker. And I'm Lady Kim, or Lady K. Lady K, amen. And we welcome you to our fourth episode of Marriage Works with the Walkers. Amen. We want to give some people some time to get on. Tag somebody. Uh, let them know that we're live. Uh, let them know to come join us. Amen. Because we want to share. Uh, we're excited about tonight. I'm excited about what we have to share on this evening. Amen. Yes. Let me pull it up on my page. So if you like the music that we're playing in the background, it's Craig Hammond. And the name of the song is, what's the name of the song? Uh, I'm in love with you. I'm in love Sounds with you. Sounds good to me. You. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I named songs by, uh, I named songs by what, uh, by what they sing. So. so that might not really be the name of the song. <laughs> uh, it's good to see we have some friends and family on. All right, I'm there now. Okay, you got it? Yes. Okay. All right, we got some people on. That is yes. excellent. Excellent, excellent. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Tag a friend, tag someone, let them know we are live. Amen. We're going to give another 45 seconds or so, 30, 45 seconds for people to get on. And then we're going to get started talking about tonight. Amen. Amen. All right. Hi, Michelle. Hey. Hey. There's my sis on. The first lady yes. at the Trinity Baptist Church. to be beautiful and very fulfilling. Uh, tonight, uh, our, our thoughts, our actions, our conversation and advice will be about beautifying your marriage. And with this thought, we, we want to deal with a theme, I guess you could say, of live on purpose, laugh often, love hard, and keep God first. That's what we want to cover today. Live on purpose, laugh often, love hard, and keep God first. Yes. So what do we mean by living on purpose? Um, we mean being intentional about creating a beautiful life with beautiful memories. Again, being intentional, doing it on purpose. Amen. Just because you say I do does not mean you're going to have a beautiful marriage. Mm -hmm. It takes effort. It takes work. It takes commitment. It takes sacrifice. It is not a 50-50 thing. That's right. Not 50-50. Right. It's you give 100, they give 100. It's complete sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And 
if you have to do this on purpose, you just can't think because you're together, because you're the same house, somehow it's going to work. You have two people coming from two different worlds into one house and one environment. Mm -hmm. And so you have to make an effort to make this work. Mm -hmm. And we thought sharing some of the the ways our marriage has worked over the years yes. in reference to be, being intentional might be helpful to, um, to some of you. Um, so we want to begin with... So, first thing we want to share today, uh, that we always tell marriage couples, plan vacations. Yes. Plan vacations, plan getaways. Yes. Uh, life can consume you with so much to do, uh, from work, uh, children, uh, taking care of your home, mm -hmm. uh, just so many things that go on, and who knows what else you mm -hmm. can have. You have to plan time to get away, to spend time with one another. Yes. Uh, if you don't plan it, it will not happen. That's right. If you don't do it on purpose, it will not happen. That's right. It has to actually, you have to take time to, to schedule it, and you have to be intentional um, even by putting it on the calendar in advance. Yes. Building it in. It's almost like you build in your meals every day. We know that at a certain time every day we're going to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, at a certain time every Sunday we're in the sanctuary. At a certain time every day we're at work. So we actually have to be intentional about building in time, vacations, yes. getaways with our spouse. Yes. Uh, plan, plan your vacation, plan getaways. Uh, we were good about, uh, we love weekend getaways mm -hmm. where we would... Uh, we would get off work on Friday and see when you do our weekend getaways, how we how we work them. It was so that we didn't have to use up any vacation days. Right. So you don't have to worry about taking off work or missing that. We were both very active in church. And so how could we do it and do it often without always having to worry about missing church? So we would take off on a Friday. Mm -hmm. We get out of work. We're gone. Mm -hmm. And Sunday morning, we come right in just in time for church. Yep. We yep. have the time just in time for church. Mm -hmm. And we had a great time because even though uh, it's only a day or two, two days, you know, you got two nights, uh, two days away, uh, when you're at home, you think about cleaning, you think about fixing things, uh, it's just you think about work. Oh, yeah. So, staycations, and I, I like personal <laughs> staycations, but when you try to do a staycation with your partner unless you're snowed in, yes, it's kind of difficult because like my husband said, then you start desiring to to clean up and things that you see around the house that need to be done that can wait but because you see them and it seems like you got to get it done right now um, it kind of hinders the time that you could spend with your partner in a staycation type situation so getting away is is very very necessary in marriage yes get find a place you like to go mm -hmm. and just change your environment yes uh, when you change your environment, it just sort of frees your mind to think. Uh, but it frees your mind from uh, the responsibilities that burden you down. And you actually come back refreshed oh, yeah. for marriage, for life, for work, yeah. for everything, for mm -hmm. your family. Because yeah. if you don't take care of this, uh, it will affect the whole household and your children will be affected yeah, also. Absolutely. So you have to take care of the time here so that uh, your children can benefit from it. Mm -hmm. And we're able to be more spontaneous at this stage in our life because our children are grown. We're not looking for babysitters and things like that. But for those of you who are married um, and you need to find a babysitter and you just can't be as spontaneous, mm -hmm. these are things that really have to be structured and built into your schedule. But they're so necessary. Yes. And if, if we don't plan them, they like my husband said, they won't happen. Um, we also want you to remember this in marriage. Always honor your wedding anniversary. Yes. Always celebrate life and celebrate how you've overcome. Because between uh, last year's wedding anniversary and next year's an wedding anniversary, or this year's wedding anniversary and next year's wedding anniversary, a lot of different things can happen. Yes. And we overcome in a lot of different ways. And sometimes I think we forget to celebrate and together, you know, build altars and thank God for what he's done for us in that year. But celebrate your, your spouse and, and thank your spouse for, you know, I thank you for 
seeing me through when I was diagnosed with something or when I was sick in in the hospital or when I had a hard time on my job or something, you know, of that nature. You just take time to thank and to acknowledge Mm -hmm. um, the things that you've overcome in your marriage and celebrate the fact that you made it one more year because that's a big accomplishment in this day and time. And the reason you celebrate, too, number one, you stayed married. Uh, Everybody doesn't stay married. Right. Two, God has blessed you both to be alive. Uh, if you are alive, and God has blessed you, but well, some people would have made it 30 years, yeah. but they got called home early, and or, or maybe not, not early, home. but they got called yeah. home, and so they didn't have a chance. So if you did, you celebrate that, and, and the celebration of your marriage really allows your love to go higher. When you think about the beauty of your wedding day mm-hmm. and how excited you was and how this is the person you love, you want to spend your life, remember that? This is a person I love. They look so nice. Uh, I just love how they think. We have fun together. And you wonder, how could you fall in in deeper love? I can tell you how. Because what you find out when you live life, when you've been there with me through my surgeries, when you've been there with me through sickness, when you've been there with me through childbearing, when you've been there with me through uh, job changes, when you've been there with me through life, and then as you come together on your anniversary, you can say, look what we've been through this year, but we made it. Yes. This we made it through yes. that this year, yes. and and when you can look at that, that's something to celebrate and something to be able to look back on it and to see how your partner mm-hmm. uh, really stood by you mm-hmm. and how your love has grown. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we looked at 2020, uh, when we think about that, we started off the year. And I'm not supposed to go on this, but we was ready to celebrate uh, my wife's birthday going into that year. Negative report, horrible report from the doctor, changed the whole beginning of our year. Yeah. Uh, but when we look back at 30 years, uh, we were able to thank God that he brought us through mm-hmm. uh, a horrible doctor's report, gave us victory, yes. amen, yes. healing, yes. Uh, supernatural healing. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, now we, we're thanking God that we are where we are. And yeah. so uh, we weren't able to get away like we all, we had plans. We had a big yeah. plan of getting yeah. away. Matter of fact, we're going to celebrate big. We're going to be invitations and everything. But, oh, Corona changed our plans. But we were still able to celebrate with each other and be thankful that we made it 30 years. Amen. That's awesome. And, and you also celebrate the fact that, you know, with everything that's that's been going on in, in our nation and even how people have been hit with financial matters that they didn't have before because of job loss and things like that, you know, if, if your marriage is still intact because money can be a big issue <laughs> and, and you're getting along and you're working through it, um, that's something to celebrate right there because sometimes yes. that's a big stumbling block in finding peace. Um, in your home. Yeah. Um, speaking of finances. Okay. So we had talked about something that we wanted to share, <laughs> and I it, it's it's hilarious to us because you know sometimes we look at we don't have enough you know people think I don't have enough money to do vacation or I don't have enough money to do this or that. Help and us all Thirty years. years ago, we weren't in the <clears throat> shape that we are now. Um, when we first got married yeah. um, 30 years ago, and we still wanted to do some fun things and go on vacation, but don't we talk decided, about us. don't talk about us, okay? <laughs> we're being transparent. <laughs> but um, we were one year old in our marriage, and so we wanted to go on um, a wedding anniversary trip. And so this is what we did. So uh, we filled up the gas tank. And we got our fifty dollars because that's all we had to spend for vacation. To spend. That was our vacation money. After the car was gas. After the full tank of gas and fifty dollars, and we went to Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls, New York. (laughs) And we stayed the night in Niagara Falls with fifty dollars and a full tank of gas. And a full tank of gas. And uh, we had such a great time. Now wait a minute. The hotel wasn't paid for. No. 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 So we had to find a hotel. We had to find a place where we could eat and and sleep and enjoy ourselves with fifty dollars. Five oh, five oh, and uh, we went up there uh, and we did, we did we had a great time. We just enjoyed each other uh, for, it or not. For, for dinner. We got a big sub because it was able to last. Yes, and we made we worked that sub. <laughs> And uh, we had a good time, and we enjoyed the falls. We had to stay on the American side because yes. it was cheaper. Yes. Couldn't go across the border. Right. But uh, we enjoyed it, stayed up all that day, went to bed, got up, 
had another sub, I think. Yeah. Because that was in the budget. Right. And uh, enjoyed the next day. Yes. Then we drove back home. Yeah. And we thought we just had a great we time. We had a great time. It was all about, it, it didn't matter what we did. It didn't matter how much money we had to spend. The most important thing was that mm. we were together. Yes. Now, we were enjoying one another. If I took Lady K now to one of them hotels and, 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 and no, nothing wrong with it did, but right now if I did that and told her we was going to sub, I think she would tell us we stay at home. We'll see. Over the years, <laughs> over the years, you know, you, you, you grow and your taste changes and you come to the point where you are no longer going to settle for a $50 vacation, but that's just how it is. We've been married 30 years. But um, I guess that's something that um, would encourage younger married couples um, I'm not encouraging anyone to go to Niagara Falls with no, $50. Don't do it. Don't, don't do, do it. it. But <laughs> what I'm just saying is what matters most is that you're it, together. You're together. So it doesn't have to be anything extravagant or elaborate. Just the fact that you are together. When you're married and you get away, the thing is you, you build memories. Uh, you, get a, you get a chance to connect. Mm -hmm. You get a chance to move away the, uh, the distractions of life. Yeah. And you're able to focus on the two of you. And that's the key. Having opportunity and time to focus on the two of you. Uh, and be able to share. Yeah. Because life hits you differently. And you want to be able to talk about those things that you went through, that you experienced. And uh, that's how you grow. Right. That's how you grow. Right. Amen. And, Amen. Yes. Uh, being intentional. Being intentional. Uh, do things together. Uh, build together or you will find yourself in different places in the years to come the key word is together That's sort of what we were talking about. Uh, it's so important that you uh, do things and you build together um, If you don't do things together, you'll find yourself drifting apart mm -hmm. uh, Not that everything in life you do You're always going to be in the same place the same time but you have to purpose. Like we said, the word is intentional. Yes. Intentional. Yes. You have to intentionally plan to do things together. Intentionally plan to uh, take trips together. Intentionally plan to date together. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you don't intentionally plan, mm -hmm. you'll find yourself uh, in different places in life because you didn't grow together. Mm -hmm. and, and so make sure that, that you uh, purposely do that. Uh, don't stop dating. Never stop dating. Don't stop dating. Even in the midst of this pandemic where movie theaters are, are not open, I don't think they're open. No, and so. most of us, are, you know, we're not going sitting down in a restaurant or anything like that. You have to think of things that you could do that you can enjoy with your spouse. I call it a date when we get in a car and we um, take a ride, a long drive, we laugh and we talk. That's a date to us right yes. now. And so just find creative ways that are safe in this season to enjoy um, your spouse. Never stop dating. Never stop dating. We went, uh, we went to the beach this year. We did. We went to the beach together. We went out to the beach, and we did not get out the car. We didn't get out the car. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even roll down the windows. We, well, like, we did a little bit, we, you know. A little bit. Yeah, we were trying Rolled to them back up. We were trying to ear hustle what was going on. Yeah, trying to hear. That's what we were trying to do. <laughs> eavesdrop. That's yeah. why we rolled them down. Like, what they talking we about? We were really people watching because we just couldn't believe that in the midst of the coronavirus uh, <laughs> pandemic, that these people were having a ball at the beach. Yes, they was so, out there, no mask. Uh, not really social. Not distancing. social distancing. People running all around in the beach, in the water, on the dog chasing dog. families all around. But anyway, let's get back to it. Okay. Right. But that yeah. was a date. That was a date for us, mm -hmm. and we had a blast. We have some. We have fun together. Didn't even get out the car. Yeah, didn't even get out the car. But for and, and for some of you, that would be like, oh, boring. But you have to find what works, what works for you. For Remember, you. we said your taste and your style. You define your marriage. Yes. yes. Uh, create joint adventures together, like we did with Marriage Works with the Walkers. Yeah. Uh, this for us is something to help us. It helps us to connect, even though we're sharing with others. For us, this is something we did together, mm -hmm. something we had to spend time planning together. Mm -hmm. So even the preparation for working together, yeah. that was a way for us to connect and it grow. It strengthens our yes. communication. Because I don't care how many years you've been married, you're going to always need to strengthen parts of your marriage. It's like, okay, I've mm -hmm. had these legs for 55 years, but if I got up and started, um, if I decided not to walk for a number of months, 
When I stand up, they're not going to be strong. They're going to be weak. So you have to exercise your marriage in that way. You have to keep it lively, and you have to keep the communication growing strong. Yeah. Uh, exercise together. Attend uh, workshops together. Even though we're married, we pastor. Uh, we counsel. Mm -hmm. uh, but we still go to workshops. Yeah. Uh, we just... Uh, we, we just had one at our church with marriage, and we weren't the facilitators. We had, that was right before uh, the pandemic. Right before the pandemic. We had Pastor uh, and Sister Karen Osborne. Mm -hmm. They did a phenomenal workshop, yeah, and we were students. Phenomenal. We sat with the rest of the couples of our church yeah. because you have to be fed into also. We had right. the Simpsons come. Yeah. Uh, we've gone away for retreats. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been to several of them. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. With our fellowship, we were up in Pittsburgh last yes. year. Mm -hmm. All the married awesome. couples, all the pastors and their wives. It's important that you don't stop feeding and doing maintenance on your marriage. Yes. Don't think because you've been married so long that you've mastered it. People have been married. That probably was one of the biggest shocks to me when I saw somebody married almost 30 years and then a divorce. I didn't think that was possible after that long, but it happens. It happens. If you, you have to be purposeful mm -hmm. in making your marriage work. Mm -hmm. it's, it, everything has to be intentional. And that's the word of the hour, be, being intentional. So we talked about going to Niagara Falls back 29 years ago when we were one year old and <laughs> how we enjoyed it. But you know what? It's, it's good to grow and to upgrade your experiences. Definitely. That's something that's really good. Always seek to improve um, the quality of the experiences that you have with your spouse. You never want to grow bored. You never want um, your spouse to be imagining things that, that you don't um, and you can't meet them there. I, you never want your spouse to imagine going on a cruise and, and you're not um, in line with that or you're not desiring the same thing. You're not desiring to go to the places that they're desiring to go. Yes. Um, in your experience, um, if all of your vacations, for example, are, are driving, like we used to just love to get in the car and we used to drive, mm -hmm. especially when we had, um, when Joseph and Jeremy were, were kids. But in time, that wasn't, you know, what we prefer. We prefer to get a plane ticket, get a flight, and go Correct. somewhere. So always be looking to enhance and to upgrade. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to spend a lot of money because we do believe in putting money to the side so that when we go on vacation, we can have a good vacation. But um, you want to upgrade. It, it just enhances right. um, the relationships, Th seeing things that you never would have saw before and seeing things together for the very first time. And, and you don't have to spend a lot of money, but there's nothing wrong with spending a lot of money on your marriage. So true. If you spend money on everything else in life, Spend money on your marriage. Very true. That's worth investing very, in. Very, very uh, true. And, and what does it take for your union to be happy? Mm -hmm. Whatever that takes, who cares what other people think? Mm -hmm. They don't lay down with your spouse. They don't have to live with them. That's right. Whatever it takes for your union to be uh, satisfied, to, be, to enjoy life, and for both of you to be content, that's what you do. Absolutely. Uh, some people... You know, we, we're not, some people are like, I want to, they want a nice car. Well, go get you. If that's what y'all take, if that's, yeah. do, do yeah. you. Yeah. Be you. Because this this world, we, we're here. You know, believers, we're in the world. We're not of the world. But while we're here, there's there's things that God wants us to enjoy. He, there's things that God wants us to experience. Um, yes. Places, I mean, if it's in your heart and, and it's something that can enhance and strengthen your marriage, by all means, it's something to be experienced. Uh, develop yourself to compliment your spouse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, develop your yourself so that you can make your marriage better. Uh, when we got married, uh, I hadn't finished college. And my wife, she had gotten her associate degree, but she wanted her bachelor's. And so we made a plan. Uh, and our plan was to go back. Now, it didn't go on the time frame that I wanted to. Right. But we never stopped with the plan. We never let it die. Right. Uh, our plan was my wife... While I was working good, she was able to go back. She did it. Uh, she was able to go back and finish up, got her bachelor's. Uh, right when she finished up, some things changed on my job. Couldn't have been better timing. Right. Uh, she was able to kick in, and a couple years later, I went back and finished up. And so we were both able to finish up. Mm -hmm. uh, that was something that it was personal for me, personal for her, but it helped our relationship, our marriage. Mm -hmm. It helped our home. Mm -hmm. uh, don't, don't stop...
allowing your spouse to continue to dream and develop themselves. Yes. Uh, there's still a, a part of you that has things that you want to do. Be their cheerleader. Be their supporter. That's so good. Uh, That's so good. I, I remember when uh, I came home. I, not came home, but I remember I woke up and I said God was dealing with me. And I told my wife I was called to pastor. And my wife from day one was like, you got to do what God said do. That's right. Because you know that meant change. That yes. meant change. Yes. But she was with me. And, and when it was time to start a church, because I told her that's what I was led to do, she was like, I hear you. I hear God in that. Because she walked with God. She was in 100% agreement. She supported me never. Uh, she supported what I was led to do mm -hmm. in my dream there. And you got to support one another. And, and the, another beautiful part of that is my husband saw in me the gifts and the calling that was on my life. And so he encouraged me to go forward in the cause that um, God had placed in my life and to exercise the gifts that God had given me. So, you know, as as his wife and, you know, supporting him, he in turn also supported me and helped me to become, and I'm still becoming, out. but. We got some things coming well, out. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. You're going to hear about them within weeks. Yeah. Uh, we got some things we've been working on that I've been pushing my wife to do. About to hit. You know we're going to blast it out. So you'll be hearing about it without a doubt. So we're excited it's about a that. Season. Uh, laugh often. Laughter is medicine. We love to laugh. Sometimes we say, what are we going to laugh about today? We we find shows that make us laugh. Yeah. Uh, we Whatever we can do to laugh. We yeah. watch shows that make us laugh. Mm -hmm. We people watch. We people watch y'all. We, we do. We, we people watch and we crack up at, oh. at strangers that are doing weird things. And we believe that somebody's watching us and cracking up they do. <laughs> at us as well. But we have two sons that um, are hilarious. So it's always, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's always something going on, going on and shenanigans, I mean, shenanigans in the Walker right. house every day. So, yeah. We enjoy laughing, and it really does. It's as medicine. Yeah. It really is as medicine. That's what the scripture says, and we found that to be so true. We laugh at marriage. each other. We laugh at the kids. I laugh we at laugh myself. at life. The saints send us stuff. They know we like to laugh. Some of our spiritual children, they send us stuff because we want to laugh. Laugh together. Laugh it's it's together. good medicine. Amen. Love hard. Love hard. I can't believe the time. We got to rush. We got three minutes. We got two things we want to cover. Okay. So love hard. Uh, you, it's important to understand love languages uh, because if a person's love language is uh, words of affirmation, mm -hmm. but you want to continue to buy them gifts, you've done something nice, but you didn't do what met their heart, what made them feel loved. Yes. You have to understand your partner's love language. And here's the other part. If their love language is words of affirmation and you're always negative, you could tear them down because you don't realize, you're thinking, well, I just I just said, it wasn't that bad. It wouldn't have bothered me. Yeah. But that's their love language, and you right. hit them at their love language. Right. Let me, let me just stick a pin here. Uh -huh. Because for, for a long time, my husband's, one of his love languages is acts of service. And so I'm thinking, okay, because my love language is um, quality time and mm -hmm. words of affirmation. So with his love language being acts of service, what I was giving him was what I wanted from him instead of giving him what he needed. And it took me a little longer than it should have right to first. figure that out. But once I figured that out, I it, it, it was on and popping. On oh, and popping! <laughs> and it really has enhanced our marriage um, yeah. to know what each other, to understand how to love each other in the love language that we have. My wife loves quality time. And here's a good one. You take off work for death. You take off work when you're sick. You just take off work just to spend time with your spouse. It's important. Take a vacation. You can't do it all the time. It's your day. But it's that's better than sending flowers than my wife. It, it just is. is. It's, it's better than sending flowers. So we got one minute. And we want to okay. cover. Keep God first. Keep God first. We have to cover that. What does it take for you to spiritually maintain your relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you're not, if you break that relationship, if that hurts, the person hurts. If the person hurts, 
the marriage hurts. Yes. It's important. Uh, one of the things, I love service. I, I'm a churchy kind of guy. Uh, I like live service. I, uh, it's good to have some tapes and stuff, but I need to be there. I need to hear your hoop. I need to hear your shout. Yeah. I need so I love convention. So I like, for instance, I would love to go when Bishop Heron has the Church of God of Christ convention. I go. O C E. O C E. When Pastor Michael Harrison has the Baptist convention, I go to that too. Mm -hmm. uh, when we have our own in Akron, I'm there mm -hmm. because those things they feed me. Mm -hmm. I love them. I come back like recharged. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, I'm the introvert. So while I will go to those things and I enjoy being in, the, in that atmosphere, I also enjoy my personal quiet time um, with the Lord. I just enjoy the journaling. I enjoy writing letters to the Lord. I enjoy um, just connecting with him one-on-one. -on -one. So it's whatever recharges you, whatever take it takes to recharge you so that you can have what you need spiritually yes. to feed into um, your marriage. And we got to... Okay, I'm going to say, we got to have two minutes. We got to do this. So give us two minutes. We got to talk about this. Uh, when you talk about one thing, two more things. Number one, uh, Ephesians 5 is big because I, I didn't want to not give this out. Mm -hmm. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, gives some very good instructions starting at verse... 21 when it talks about submitting one to another it starts right there don't don't skip that and go to submit husbands i mean why submit to your husband start at 21 where it says submit one to another it gives some good advice mm -hmm. for marriage couples mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i would say to to my sisters who are watching um never treat another man better than you would treat your husband Correct. It doesn't matter who that man is. Never treat another man better than you would treat your husband. Men need to be respected. That is an in it uh, part of their existence. They need to feel respected. Make sure he knows through your actions and not just your words that he is the king of your castle. He knows that God is the Lord of your life. But <laughs> Sarah called Abraham Lord. Okay, that re relationship and that um that respect that she gave her husband. You know, that is how we are to love our husbands and to let them know that they are the most important, um, they're the king of the castle and most important men in our lives. Amen. And husbands, you have to have a sacrificial love for your wife. Uh, it says uh, Christ loved, uh, he said he told us to love our wives like Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, is that he might present to himself a church without spot or wrinkle. In other words, we always tell the church when we have a call to discipleship, come as you are. Yeah. Uh, you come as you are and watch Christ uh, clean you up. Watch him help you to be who you need to be. Mm -hmm. uh, when your wives, uh, you see things in them, it's your responsibility to help them be all they can be. They cannot be all they are supposed to be without your help. And so whatever sacrifices you have to make, you do that so that your wife can be who she's supposed to be. Uh, love her like Christ loved the church. Help her to become. So if you see, if you don't like her hair, then you ought to be the one providing money to get her hair done. Don't say we ain't got no money to do it when you're complaining about it. If you don't like her clothes, then hopefully you're going to say, hey, well, we need to make sure you get some money to go shopping. You make sure that she can be what you want her to be. Uh, it's our job to make the sacrifices, to, to make sure they feel that love and they feel that protection. If they feel that protection, uh, it will help them to become all they've been called to be. Uh, we had to rush through that ending, uh, but we want to thank you so much yes. uh, for spending the time with us. We are so grateful. We really enjoyed this, uh, Marriage Works, uh, this season, 30-year uh, anniversary season we had with you. We pray that it's been a blessing to you, uh, our time with you. I'm asking that if it has blessed you, please send us a message. Let us know. Uh, post something on our page. Uh, we want to hear from you. Uh, we have some ideas. We're thinking about coming back later, but we want to know what you think about it uh, and if it was a blessing to you mm -hmm. and if it was beneficial to you. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Remember this. Uh, uh, we, remember this. It has to be intentional because your intentional acts, your intentional deeds is what's going to make your marriage work. Uh, we pray that God will bless your marriage uh, or your future marriage. Or your future marriage. And may heaven continue to smile upon you. And uh, we want you to remember that you can build your marriage and you can make it all that God wants it to be. Yes. Uh, may God bless you. We love you. And thanks for joining us and being with us for Marriage Works with the Walkers. We love you. We love Bye. you. Good night.